This video is made possible by Hover.com. Speed on the internet is crucial, and that includes how fast you can register your domain. Hover.com has a fast and easy three-step and done registration process with no upsells. So head over to Hover.com slash infographics and give them a try with an instant 10% discount off your own domain that's exclusive for fans of the infographics show. We hate to point out the obvious, but the G in 5G stands for generation. The generation that came before it, 4G, is not quite global, but it covers 88 countries according to the website OpenSignal. This website is often cited for 4G facts and tells us that five countries had access to an LTE connection more than 90% of the time. LTE means long-term evolution, and it's basically a standard for wireless data transmission. The countries with the most available connections the last time we checked were, in order, South Korea, Japan, Norway, Hong Kong, and the United States. What's more important to most people, and it's the topic of today's show, is speed. In the age of our hyperconnectivity, slowness kills. It kills browsing, it kills games, it kills job satisfaction, it kills companies, and most importantly, it kills fun. Right now, the countries with the best 4G connections in terms of speed measured by megabits per second are in order Singapore, the Netherlands, Norway, and South Korea. They all have above 40 megabits per second. This is the average speed in the country, and there's a huge disparity across the globe. The average 4G connection in the USA, for instance, is 16.31. 1 megabits per second, while in India it's 6.07, in Lithuania it's 30.78 Mbps, and in the UK it's 23.11 megabits per second. Asia and Europe are the continents to beat for fast speeds, and that's because many countries have the best LTE infrastructure, although quite a few countries in Western Europe don't have this great infrastructure and that's why they have slower wireless speeds. It's also said that some countries in Asia and Europe developed 3G technology early, so they had good infrastructure already. OpenSignal also tells us that a fast connection also depends on if a country has adopted new 4G technologies like LTE Advance, how densely networks are built and how much congestion there is on those networks. So if you have a country that has developed LTE advanced infrastructure and has enabled devices and not much congestion, you have good results. That's why connections are so much superior in Lithuania than they are in the country which houses Silicon Valley. So if you're in parts of Asia, not all Asia for sure, or in parts of Eastern Europe, you can almost be sure to get a wireless connection and watch this video without any interruption. That's not the same for you guys in the USA, with one tech media outlet calling the country's wireless connection extremely and embarrassingly slow. We're told that one of the reasons for this is that LTE networks have just not been developed as well as in other countries, and while US citizens can enjoy having good proportion of time users have access to the network, they won't be raving about speed anytime soon. Maybe the US doesn't care much about its poor world rank, because everyone now is talking about the new 5G technology. The question everyone is asking, of course, is how good will 5G be? And as many of our viewers are from the US and have just heard this disturbing news about a fairly bad 4G connection, they might be wondering if they'll also get a raw deal when it comes to 5G. Will 5G mean the end of annoying stops and starts, or are Americans and some parts of the rest of the world destined to have slow speeds for years to come? Ok, so when we change a generation to the next generation, what that means is that some fundamental differences have occurred. In the case of wireless internet, that means such things as better transmission technology, added frequency bands, higher peak bit rates, improved bandwidth in hertz, and an ability for more data transfers. In short, information sent across the internet is processed faster and you get it quicker, and you can do whatever it is you're doing with a smile on your face. The technology has improved. End of case. You might now ask, what's the major changes with 4G and 5G? Good question, and we'll answer it for you. Firstly, some of you know firsthand that 4G was far better than 3G and in some cases gave speeds to people that were much faster. Similar improvements can be made when we go to 5G. We're told that LTE advanced technology has allowed a data rate of up to 1 gigabit per second with 4G. But we're told with 5G, we might be looking at 5 to 10 gigabits per second. Some say as much as 20 gigabits per second. You might now be thinking, huh, my 4G doesn't give me 1 gigabit per second? And didn't you just say the USA averages a paltry 16 megabits? Yes, we did. And these are average speeds. Your car might be able to do 130 miles per hour all out, but it averages closer to 50. We're told with 5G, there's no way you're going to get 10 or 20 gigabits per second on average, but it will still be a metaphorical 
Porsche for the piece of old junk you have in the driveway right now. These massive upticks in speed are partly due to new frequencies being available. As the droid guy explains, 4G LTE technology is only capable of using lower frequency bands. Right now, it can only operate up to 6 GHz, whereas radio bands that 5G will be able to handle will be anywhere between 30 GHz and 300 GHz. This will make all the difference, and we're told with 5G we might be looking at phones that can do much more than before, such as downloading large files and generally using more advanced software. The new frequencies won't be crowded, and because it uses wavelengths, it'll be able to handle more devices. That means less congestion. Testing so far has shown 1,000 devices per meter, and that is a lot. One of the reasons why your net seems to disappear for the most part is because of crowded networks, and with 5G, it's hoped it won't happen. With less crowding, you'll be able to get more speed. So much, in fact, it's being said that this connection will be able to replace regular Wi-Fi connections. That's because, on average, you might be looking at getting around 100 megabits per second, which is far greater than what you get now with 4G. Still. It will depend on where you live. Will people in Seoul still be laughing while folks in South Carolina have buffering PTSD? It's not easy to answer because right now, we don't know the state of the infrastructure. We're told South Korea, China, and Japan are all in the running to getting the networks up first, but the USA is also in with a chance. We're talking widespread availability. In some parts of the US, you can already get a 5G connection, but it isn't a regular mobile connection. There is limited 5G connections in some other countries too. We're told we're on the brink of a full rollout happening and in 2020, things will be well on the way. By 2024, it's estimated by some experts at least that 40% of the world will have 5G. With so many people gaining access to 5G, getting that perfect domain name you've been thinking about right now is more important than ever. Head over to Hover.com and register your own domain today. Hover's mobile experience is super smooth. You can even check out with Apple Pay to make a quick and easy process even faster. They've got great alternative extensions like .me or .expert, so you can be sure to get a domain that's personalized and perfect just for you. And with Hover's Connect feature, you can link your domain to just about any website Website builder with just a few clicks, so you won't ever be stuck with one host. Go to hover.com slash infographics and get 10% off your domain name today just for being a fan of the infographics show. Are you looking forward to this? Do you think it'll be a game changer? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other show, Most Expensive Domain Ever Sold. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.